Behind me is the best-selling Honda you can buy nowadays. It's the 2020 refreshed Honda CRV. And Tommy, who's behind the camera, and myself, hey guys, are gonna find out if it's any good off-road. You ready, Tommy? Yeah, let's hit it. So Tommy, let's face it, most people will never take a CRV into anything as serious as we're about to take it because I've got the owner's manual right here and on the off highway driving guidance, it tells you this. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Your vehicle has been designed primarily to use on pavement. Okay. However, it does have higher ground clearance and allows for occasional travel on unpaved roads. That's good, we are on an unpaved road. But keep in mind, it's not designed for trailblazing or other challenging off-road highway activities. So it's no trailblazer, huh? Nope, nope, nope. And here's a little guide on what you should do when you're going off-road. So check out your vehicle, avoid obstacle and debris, Drive on driving on slopes increases your risk of rollover. Do you know that? <laughs> yep, I did. Do not cross a stream, avoid crossing through deep water. And if you get stuck, carefully go in the direction that you think will get you unstuck. And wow. do not spin the tires as this will make things worse. It possibly damage the transmission. Because you know what kind of transmission it is? CVT? Yeah, that's right. Alrighty, so, so we are disobeying the owner's manual. We are disobeying the owner's manual. And we are on a pretty uh, rough and rugged off-road trail. And I've got this thing set to my off-road pages. It basically shows me the engine and the four wheels and a chassis. So shall we go off-road? Yeah, let's go see what this can do. Do you guys love cars? Well, we've got a new podcast that will keep you entertained for hours, from on-road to off-road, from Corvette to Jeeps. Check out tflcar.com slash podcast, or go to wherever you get your podcast, including iTunes, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. So why are we taking this off-road when the manual clearly states that we should not be? Because that's what we do here at TFL. It's a crossover. It's got some ground clearance. So we're gonna see how it does on this little trail. I would say we do it so you don't have to. <laughs> no, I mean we're professionals, guys. So we've been doing professionals. This for, we've been doing this for yeah. ten years now. So hopefully uh, we've learned a thing or two about going off road. And uh, immediately, you know, you can tell whether a car is happy off road or unhappy. And with the combination of basically street tires and CVT, it's not happy. You're missing a key part of this platform though. What's that? These are actually snow tires. Honda provided us this vehicle with a set of aftermarket tires, believe it or not, and that's because it is marked here in Colorado. And these are Bridgestone Blizzak stubless snow tires mounted on 19 inch wheels. This isn't gonna be as good off-road as like a proper all-terrain, but I think it will do better in the dirt than the standard all season. With a combination of snow tires <laughs> and a CVT, it's not happy. That doesn't mean you can't do it, it just means you know, some vehicles eat it up and some vehicles are like, what the are you doing, boy? And get me out of here. And this one's more in that line. For 2020, Honda actually killed off the naturally aspirated four-cylinder CRV. The only engine available now is this 1.5 liter. It's a wee little turbocharged engine, but it develops pretty decent power. 190 horsepower, 179 pound-feet of torque. Now I say only engine, and that's somewhat true because for 2020 there's also a CRV hybrid available. But this today is just your standard turbocharged engine. The Honda CRV is a compact crossover yep. that competes with the Toyota RAV4, the Nissan Rogue, the Ford Escape, the Chevrolet Equinox. This is a super popular class, right? It's their best-selling car, dude. Yeah, they sell hundreds of thousands of CRVs every year. Yep. And one of the reasons they do so is because, unlike your traditional mid-size sedan, these crossovers have a little bit extra ground clearance, they typically have all-wheel drive, and people that buy these cars think that they're more capable than their kind of sedan counterparts, right? And that's kind of what we're out here today testing out to see if the CRV will actually get you to the campsite uh, to get you to, you know, the trailhead. Once upon a time, well, not even that long ago, the Camry and the Accord were Toyota's and Honda's best-selling cars, but not anymore. Today, it's their crossovers, the CRV and the RAV4. Now, why is that? And the answer, of course, is pretty obvious. You can see it right here. It's much taller, so you sit up higher. It's got a lot more interior space, and it has 
the one thing that makes this a much more practical vehicle. And that's of course a hatchback. Instead of a trunk, you now have this massive opening that allows you to load more people, pets, and things into the back of your family hauler. And that's why crossovers are so popular. In fact, with so much room, you could probably sleep back here and you could certainly take a camping. And that's one of the reasons we're doing this off-road review because you might think to yourself, I've got a big old crossover, I wanna go camping. Let's find out if the vehicle can do that. Yeah, you know, the biggest problem I already face right now is the fact that I'm sitting low in this car and I'm having a hard time seeing over the hood uh, and actually seeing those obstacles that the owner's manual says I'm supposed to avoid. <laughs> in terms of ground clearance, yeah. 8.2 inches of ground clearance in this car. Which is 0.5. Half like, of an inch. It's half of an inch less than a Subaru. <laughs> yeah, which is not, you know, insignificant. Yeah, no, I, I mean, every inch matters, especially when you're out on, on in the trail. Yes, indeed. Um, however, you know, I can tell you that uh, from a sending power to the right wheel, it has not put a wheel wrong yet, right? It's it's not struggling. It's not like spinning its wheels. It's not uh, trying to you know tear its bottom out. It's doing really well, even though I don't think it's happy doing it. But it's doing it really well. Let's call it a reluctant off-roader. Uh, the thing about these crossovers is we like to really push them, you know, to what they're capable of. Which is about this. Yeah, because the issue is the all-wheel drive system in this car is proving itself to be very capable but you can't actually get places to prove the all-wheel drive system is capable because it doesn't have the ground clearance to go to those places where you'd have it off camber. Or the low range. Or the low range, right. Yeah, and one last point about the all-wheel drive versus front-wheel drive. Uh, this all-wheel drive actually gets really good fuel economy. I believe it's 32 on the highway, uh, 29 combined, which is really good. <clears throat> Here we go. Was it right? Dang, you're spot on. Uh -huh. 27 city, 29 combined and 32 highway. And how much does this bad boy cost? Well, this is a loaded one. Yeah. So this is a Touring yep. in Aegean Blue Metallic. I like the color, it's pretty cool. I love cool. the color, it's yeah. really cool. This one comes in at 35,845, and this is a loaded Touring trim. Now you might be hard pressed to notice a difference between this 2020 model and the 2019, but one word defines the difference, and that is black. Honda basically blacked out a lot of stuff on the grill, so now you'll see blacked out surrounds, in front of the headlights, you'll see much more black on the grill, and you'll see, well, a much more, according to Honda, purposeful and athletic front fascia. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments below. Holy cannoli, I have an actual volume knob and a shift lever. We're making progress, and because this is a top of the line touring model, every conceivable safety feature you can get in the Honda, including lane keep, including such comfort features as a heated steering wheel, and perhaps one of my favorite new features right now, wireless charging for my phone. There's a relatively big screen with a pretty good backup camera. I also have a configurable screen in the center, and everything I touch, especially the steering wheel, especially my armrest, feels expensive. I gotta tell you, I'm not a big fan of this, I assume, fake wood. This right here is a real reason most people buy CRVs. It's not because of their off-road capability, but because of their family hauling capability. And here in the second row, ooh, lots of leg room, lots of head room, lots of shoulder room. I even have two and a half amp USBs back here. Yes, this is a very good back seat. One of the best in the business. off-road there's a, a few things you need right you need ground clearance yep you need good tires approach departure angle good approach angle. yep a good 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 angles yep. uh, good gearing yep and good articulation and good tires yeah now this car actually does have the tire part kind of figured out these blizzaks are pretty good even on this kind of soft dirt stuff they have a, a soft compound so they really grip it doesn't really have the ground clearance nope uh, it doesn't have the approach angle. Approach angle is just over 18. Yeah, we'll show that in a little bit. Yeah, departure is, I think, 23. Yep. Um, and it doesn't really have the gearing. Although I will say, for a CBT, it's doing a pretty good job of not overheating. Yeah, it also has a really <laughs> soft and compliant ride. Yeah. Unlike, it, unlike a Wrangler, right, which might have uh, solid axles that kind of bounce you around, this thing really is nice and soft. Yeah, fully independent suspension. 
but the advantage of that is when you hit these kind of smaller bumps, each wheel moves independently of each other, so it's not really transmitted into the cabin. How do you, how do you think this compares to like a, a, a RAV4 or even, even a Subaru Outback, which we own as well? Well, the one thing, you know, that the RAV4 gives you, which let's face it, is its major competitor, right? The Escape also competes, but the RAV4 is really the one that people cross shop with this. Right. Uh, that one, there is an adventure version, which gives you a little bit more ground clearance, gives you a little bit more off-road looking... Tires. <laughs> ...cladding and... and you Rubber, know, yeah. Yeah, so, so, well, it maybe doesn't give you a lot more real off-road, you know, goodies. It does give you a lot of things that make it look off, more off-road worthy, and I think Honda's starting to get there with, like, the Passport, you know, but still, basically, Honda, it's a weird thing, Tommy, Honda is the only company, only car company that I know of it doesn't actually do off-road, right? They really don't. There's there's no dedicated Honda off-roader. Toyota, of course, has, you know, the Land Cruiser, the Forerunner, the Tacoma. Um, Ford has, you know, a plethora of cars now, including the new Bronco, and so does GM. So does Nissan with the Patrol. So does Mitsubishi with the Outlander. But Honda, for some reason, does not do off-roaders, except for their motorcycles. Which yeah. is weird. Well, and their motorcycles and even the new Talon yeah. are some of the best off-roaders in the world. Yeah, you know, but they've got one of the best off-road um, motorcycles ever made. I gotta think it has to do something. There's gotta be a conscious decision, right? Somebody at some point in Honda said, "This is not what we do, so we're not going to do it." Because otherwise, with off-roading being so popular, especially with kind of overlanding being so popular now, you'd think that they would have one. There we go. Finally, the first time we got tire slip, but it handled it well. Yeah, but keep in mind, Dad. I mean, they do. They are aware of the craze. So, for example, you know, they brought a lifted CRV to SEMA. Yeah. Remember? With like the rooftop tent and the, the front grill guard. Yeah, yeah, but that's, that's, you know, that's not, that's like, that's not, that's not corporate Honda saying, hey, we're going to unveil an off-roader that you can actually go and take on Moab with or run the Baja with, right? Sure. Which is weird. I mean, they did run the Baja in a Ridgeline, kind of, sort of. Sort of. Yeah, you know, it was a race truck. It was. So, I mean, I think they're they're they recognize that it's a big world, but I think you're right. They should come out from the factory with a, uh, a let, 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 soft rotor at least you can buy. Let me put it this way, right? Honda doesn't make a car or truck with a dedicated low range, which which is right. all you need to know basically about how off road worthy they are. Yeah, but you know the funny thing is the passports in the Pilot yeah. with that IVTM4 all-wheel yeah. drive system yeah. are pretty darn good. You, you know, I mean they're not they're not going to be forerunner good, but that's a it's a good system. We've proven it on our slip test. We've proven it off road that you know the passport, given some aftermarket goodies, is going to be pretty good off road. So now let's look at one of the main reasons the Passport exists, and that's just for going off-road. Now the approach angle here is 21.4 degrees, while the departure angle is 27.7. And that departure angle is way better than a Pilot because the rear end overhang is so much shorter. So Honda basically says that, you know, for the Pilot customer who wants something a little sportier and a little more off-road focused, you're going to want a Passport. So, you know, we've made it pretty far up this trail, uh, but really soon we're going to hit the ironclads, which is where, you know, the true off-roaders get separated from the soft-roaders, right? Right. So I'll take it up to the very first obstacle, which, you know, is be even before the Razor Rocks. Yeah. And let's see if we can even get up that first obstacle. And I'm going to make a prediction. Yep. I'm going to say that this does not have enough front approach angle to be able to get up that first obstacle without tearing a spoiler off. The steps? Yeah. I think that's probably a good prediction. So this trail is called the Ironclad. It's one of our off-road testing areas, especially here in the winter. And up there, we have our infamous Razor Rocks. But just getting to the Razor Rocks, we actually have these steps here. And in the Highlander, we couldn't make it up the first step because the front end would scrape. So let's see how the CRV compares. Come the steps, which are going to be the real challenge here for the Highlander. I don't think I'm going to have enough clearance here, but we'll see what happens. This just has a really bad approach angle. You see the problem, Tommy? Yeah, there's no way I'm going to be clearing this first ledge, and there's no way around it either. I mean, you'll hit this, right, and you'll 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 scrape that up, and you'll tear it off, and um, then I'm going to call Toyota, and then you guys are going to be like, why didn't you go over the bump? And I'll be like, because it's not our car, <laughs> and we don't want to tear off the front fascia. Coming up on what is now beyond the trail head. 
and onto the actual Ironclads Trail, the first obstacle, which is really the um, steps for the Razor Rocks. So we shall see how this thing does. And so far so good, but I think I'm not going to have enough approach angle when I get to the actual step. But we shall see, we shall try. Keep in mind these cars are not ours, and so uh, we don't want to break it. This does belong to Honda. So far so good. See how the clearance is here. Keep coming. Keep coming, you're good. You're good. Keep coming. Keep coming and stop. Am I gonna hit? Yeah. That's what I was afraid of. So you can see right here, we are totally out of front and clearance. There's no way to go left or right to avoid this obstacle. This rock extends the full width of the vehicle. And basically what would happen is a front end that has the radiator, uh, which you, you kind of need to have the vehicle function, would rip itself off on that rock before the front wheels would climb up to avoid this obstacle. So this is called approach angle. You can actually see this is a good example of a gradient. And the CRV just doesn't have enough approach angle to clear this first rock. That's it guys. We're out of the clearance. Tommy, I'd call the Honda CRV a reluctant off-roader. It'll go where you want it to go. It may not do it with a big smile on its face, but nevertheless, it'll go there. And I think that's about all you can ask for, for a car that's basically, well, according to the owner's manual, a highway car. Yeah, and I think if you want a similar vehicle that's a lot more capable, get the Passport. Yeah, exactly. If you're looking for more off-road crud or cred in a Honda lineup, Go for the talent. As always, this is Roman and Tommy saying thanks for watching and check out Tommy shaking his head. TFLcar.com or TFL Off Road for more news, views, and of course, real world Honda CRV reviews. See you guys next time, ciao.